All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you. Today, our topic is about money and money, money, money. You know, a uh, human being always can be tempted by many things, and money is a major thing. Uh, you know, people for the sake of money, they kill. For the sake of money, they take off their clothes and do porn business, prostitution. For the sake of money, they lie, they steal. For the sake of money, they cheat. For the sake of money, a lot of crimes happen. So it's obvious that money have a huge impact in the behavior of a human being. And if you want to control somebody, money is one of the most powerful ways to control people. With money, you can make people go hungry if they don't have it. You can make them big you for a piece of a bread. You can make them slaves. You can buy them without even being in the slave market. Money is an extremely powerful tool, and nobody can deny how powerful it is. And Muhammad, he understand very well how powerful this tool is. Yeah, in the West they say, uh, money talk right gold silver you know the heaven of islam if you look at it uh, we will find that this heaven contain uh, 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 major promises number one uh, sex and sex will not be happy sex unless you have uh, let us say requirement a requirement need money how that can be I mean okay you get them the women who is going to feed them hmm. so we have to give them free food all right and then we have to give them free clothing mm -hmm. and then we have to give them uh, beautiful houses this is all his money but in the top of that the God of Islam he promised real money inside the heaven let us go and see some reference and try to understand the logic of the God of Islam. In the front of us, we have many hadith. You know, we can choose any. And always Muhammad, he used, uh, you know, uh, he tells stories. He is a st storyteller. You know, he's a storyteller. And you will see when he tells a story, he don't report the story twice correctly, which means each time he reports the story, it has different details. And that because he is simply a fraud, you know, a person who is speaking for God or reporting, especially if he's reporting Musa said, Musa said, and he asked God, how does the story change from a day to a day? So let us read uh, one of the stories. Uh, which Muhammad he spoke of and this is Sahih Hadith so Muslim cannot say it is not true <clears throat> Muhammad he said the messenger of Allah said Musa asked his Lord who amongst the inhabitants of the paradise is the lowest to rank this is the lowest okay this is not the highest this is the lowest he Allah said and here we notice something very, uh, very strange. Musa, he say, Allah, he say. Well, Musa and Allah are talking. You will see the same when it's come to Isa. Allah and the Isa, they talk. There is conversation between Isa and Allah. There is conversation between many names and Allah, except Muhammad. Muhammad never spoke to Allah. Here you will see, he, Allah, said, the person who would be admitted into paradise last of all among those deserving the paradise. The last one. This is the last one because he deserves paradise, but obviously he is not good. You know, he is not good like the rest. So he is at the end of the line. All right. So this is the lowest rank. Okay. Who are admitted to it. I would be, it would be said to him, enter paradise. He would say, <laughs> Oh my Lord, how should I enter? While the people 
have seated on their apartments. Hmm, there's apartments in heaven. Not apartments, actually. It says houses. Uh, remember, uh, Allah, he promised the Muslims very big uh, uh, tent made of uh, ruby. And the distance inside it is 70, uh, you know, cupid. Uh, 70 miles, sorry, or 70, uh, what they call it. It's actually not 70. I mean, the number sometimes he mentions 70, but the, the same distance between uh, Al Jabia, the, the area of Al Jabia, and, uh, and Yemen, which means like a thousand and three hundred kilometers or more. This is just one room in the house. Okay, so he says uh, people they enter their houses and take in their shares. Okay, it would be said to him, Would you please, would you be pleased if there will be? be for you the like of kingdom of king amongst the kings of the world what 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 you will what what will please him would you be pleased if there is be for you the likeness of a kingdom of a king among the kings of the world okay I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to continue reading for a little bit so we can analyze this. So you are going to heaven and now Allah is promising you, you will be asking you, do you like to be like a king, like rich like a king from the king of the world, have a kingdom? That's nice. I mean, okay, Allah, okay, thank you. So uh, he is the last one who entered the heaven and he is asking uh, then Allah, okay, I will enter heaven to get wet. There is no places for me. Everybody took his apartment, took his houses. Hello? You know, Allah says to him, Allah, he is very careful. I need that kingdom of him. Do you like to go and get the built apartment like a king of a king? What the heck is that? So Allah is asking the guy, like, is that really okay for you? I mean, what is missing is that Allah is kissing his shoes, asking him, please, come on, just get in, man. Don't worry, I will get you what you want. And then, he would say, oh, I am pleased, my Lord. I'm what? I'm pleased, my Lord. Okay, thank you. And then Allah, he would say, Allah will not stop. That's it. He opened his mouth. He cannot keep, keep, keep talking. He cannot stop talking. For you is that. And like that. And like that, and like that, and that. Like, what the heck is that? The, the CD stuck? Okay, hold on. So he told him, you will be, uh, is it good for you to be like a king? From the king of those world, which means you have richness. Uh, the guy accept. Allah did not stop. Allah said to him, for you is that, which means you will be like a king with the richness. And like that, which means more, twice. And like that, which means three times. And like that, which four. And that, which means five. And he would say at the fifth, which mean he said that fifth time. So you will be five times already now rich than any king. I am really pleased, Allah. I'm really pleased. And then Allah, he will say to him, it is for you. And ten times like that. That's mean 50 times more rich than any king of this earth 50 times not 10 times remember five in the beginning and then he added 10 times then the five 10 times like that so now he is rich 50 times more than any king of this earth okay okay question i am 50 times richer than Bill Gates. But everything in the heaven is free. So what I would do with this money? And what richer mean? In which scale? Remember, he is comparing him to a king. What king have? What do kings have? Money. King can be bad, can be... I mean, why you are asking him to be like a king? Okay, so it's about richness. Actually, in different hadith, make it more clear. It's about money. But if you are going to heaven and everything is for free, so what this money for?
And what this conversation is about? I mean, okay, Allah is meeting him and more and more. Is that like an auction? And if this is the lowest reward in the heaven, so what, like the highest reward will be like uh, one million times uh, richer than any king? What does that mean? So in heaven there is rich and poor still? Because if that will make you 50 times richer than a king and you are the lowest reward, still in heaven, that's mean that in heaven there is people who they are way richer than you. So in heaven there is rich and poor. Because poor is, uh, you know, is, is compared to somebody else is, when we say poor. Like somebody is poor uh, in America, he's rich to somebody in India, right? So when we say poor, it's poor compared to who? So if this guy is poor, and this is what, what Muslims are saying to us now, because he's the lowest of the mankind who deserve to go to heaven, and he is yet 50 times richer than any king in this earth. That means Osama bin Laden will be a million times more rich than him. Now, you are 50 times more rich than a king. And what you will do with the money? What exactly we can do? Well, there is many things you can do in the heaven of Allah. If we go to the different hadith, let us open the other one. In the hadith, Muhammad he claimed that there is a bazaar, and for sure the Muslim they will say it is daif. Why it's daif? Because it's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. Muhammad he said, indeed in paradise there is a market in which there is no buying nor selling except for images of men and women. Okay, so what we confirm now, that Muhammad is preaching to his followers that there is a market in paradise. So now we found a place for your money. So now you are 50 times more rich than any king in the world. And now your pocket is full of gold and silver. Now you will go to this market. How you will spend this money in this market? You will buy fruits? No. Furniture? Absolutely not. Your house is full of furniture. Your house is built actually from one brick of gold, one brick of silver, as the hadith says. So what this money for? You go to the market and there is nothing there to buy except images of men and women. So you go inside the store and they have magazine in the door or like inside. Your majesty, you sit and they start showing you images of men and women. And then, and whoever man desiring or desire an image, he enter it. So Allah, he will give you a lot of money so you can spend it on prostitution. Because this is a play boy. This is a prostitution market. This is like Thailand, etc. Those countries who have like, uh, or maybe, you know, in, in Netherlands or, you know, some countries they have licensed prostitution. So you go to the market, they have brochure for you. You open the brochure and you see in the brochure pictures of men and women. And remember here, the pictures is not for women only. The pictures is for men and women which means Allah is preaching homosexuality in heaven. So, the man is the customer. So it says here, so whenever a man desire, who is the desired? Who is the one desiring the image? It's a man. Who is in the image? Images of men and women. So when the man he desire an image, he enter it, which means you have sex with it. And here I find that the idea of having Islam is not only childless, stupid, uh, crazy, it's full of fantasy, sexual fantasy. Money, honey, wine, river of wine, river of honey, women have no panties, endless penis, women she have a butt of one mile size which is very small, I don't know why it's small. 
And then in the top of that, you will be 50 times richer than any king in this earth. And in the top of that, you go to the market to spend your money over pictures of image on images of men and women so you can sleep with them. I mean, I think the image for us is became perfect clear how Allah present himself to us. He have a house, it's called Pimp House. And those who follow him, he reward them uh, by money, by gold, by silver. And he reward them by sexual desire. Um, in one hadith, Muhammad, he claimed that the Muslim man, he will have 70 years orgasm, which is very short. Uh, what is zakat? Why you are changing the topic? I mean, why you asked? Why, why people, they have a flight of thought? Focus with us. Zakat is a Hebrew word. It's not even Arabic. Muhammad, he stole it from the Jews. Zakat is coming from the Bible. You know. But please focus with me. Focus. Focus for God's sake. Now, the question is, why in the, why in the world... I am going to heaven and yet I find the heaven is still like here I mean what is different here there's a places there's a they have a brochures they send you show you images of men and women and if you desire to sleep with anyone they, they bring they bring the person to your home they bring 100 for you 200 just bring the money Just bring the money. So here we find that Allah, Aka Muhammad, is doing his best to tempt his men to believe in him using money and sex both together. And Muhammad make it sound like very easy, like, okay, you go there, like now you are the lowest heaven, and look, Allah will ask you a question. And just complain, man. Just complain. Tell him, Allah, where I'm going to go? I'm the last one, you know. And Allah will say to you, Okay, hold on. You, I will make you like a king. Okay, is that enough for you? You say, Yeah, I'm enough. You say, I will make like more and one like that, 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 and then ten in the top of that, which means fifty times more. So now, are you satisfied? The guy he became fifty times richer than a king in the world. I mean, okay, hold on. If he have his house for free. He have the women are waiting for him. The food is for free. Uh, the clothing for free. They will never be even wrinkled. You know, the Muslims, when they go to heaven, they will wear a green silk stabrak, which is made in Iran, like Gucci. <laughs> you know, Allah, he could not find a name for his fabric except a very well-known brand in the time of Muhammad. It's called stabrak, which is equal to Gucci today. But it's made from silk, green silk. So, Promising me such a promise. I have all of those for free. And now you are giving me money. And now you are trying to find a solution for the money. You made me uh, 50 times more rich than any king in this earth. And now I find myself going to a casino or a pimp house. And there is nothing but women, images and men. So who are the women who Allah he promised us to have in the heaven already? Is that enough? And why there is men you will sleep with? So, you know, depend in your intelligent or intelligence, you can accept or ref refuse this story. For many reasons, if the Muslim they claim that Allah is a holy God, ask any Muslim, is Allah holy? They will say yes, he is holy. Okay, how the holy God he promised you such a promise? about money you see there's nothing in the heaven of islam is spiritual all of it is about gold silver women sex you know private part women they have uh, men uh, the quran even saying that allah he promised the, the men uh, you will see here he described for us what is inside the women a private part. What is inside 
the women private part. Look at this description. I mean, okay, you are going to go to heaven now. And Allah is telling you, how you can deny what I'm going to give you? I'm going to give you a beautiful female who they are restrained, they are jailed. Huh? <laughs> the women are jailed because you don't want them to run away from you. You are ugly like hell. And then those women are very beautiful. You enter inside the tent, if you like, if you look like me, imagine. Uh, Allah, he put all those females waiting for me. They have no panties. And then I enter inside the tent and they get scared. I mean, I will make them scared like crazy. Oh, I forgot. Allah will make me look like Prophet Joseph. According to Muslims, all Muslims when they enter heaven, they will drink from two cup of water or two spring of water. One will make them so white. And one will make them uh, youth, uh, let's say young, in the age of Jesus, and they have the face of Joseph. All of them, all Muslims will have the face of Joseph. Actually, I remember once I was in the Philippines doing a seminar. So uh, uh, I was talking about this topic, and I asked, who is here? His name is Joseph. One of them, he put his hand up. It's funny. Uh, he have no teeth. I mean, he have two teeth coming out from his... his like, I'm not making fun of him, but he was saying, uh, they would look like me. <laughs> I am Joseph. <laughs> the guy, he was very funny, very humble. And, you know, he have a funny teeth, you know. So you, he said, they would look like me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the females are now stuffed for you inside your tent and they cannot leave no they cannot see any man they are not allowed you see it says restrained it's a tent by the way the bedouin muhammad he could not forget to speak about tent in the heaven there's tent okay and then those women who they are in the heaven inside their tent where nobody can see them what is special about them the vagina they have a very special vagina. And here you notice something, maybe many do not notice. Muhammad, he claimed that those versions, not only they are versions, he described what is inside their private part, but no man, neither genie, did have boom boom with them. Hmm. How genie is going to have sex with those women in heaven? Any Muslim can explain to me? I mean, what kind of a promise this promise is? Don't you think it's stupid? Allah promised me, women, which no man, no genie. What do you mean man? What man? I mean, like, what does that mean? Are they those are made for you, brand you? Why you are saying there's no man, there's no genie? And how a genie will have sex with the women? In fact, Muslims, they believe that genie they can do have sex with Muslim women. If I do a little search in uh, Google, Prophet Google, peace upon him, let us see. <clears throat> you will see endless Muslim sites speaking about having sexual intercourse with genie. Um... Let us see. <clears throat> and by the way, what we are talking about, maybe for us it's funny and stupid. But the Muslim, they take it very serious. Very, very serious. Okay. This is a Muslim website. I'm just searching in Google, you know, nothing special. 
just to show you how Muslims talk about this topic. Question. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh Hisham. So this is the name of the Sheikh. The Sheikh they are asking him. Sheikh Hisham. Okay. I am married for 24 years. My marriage has not been one that I can be happy about. Many arguments have filled my marriage. About four years ago, my wife started change, starting changing. I have noticed that she would be sexually aroused, <clears throat> which I have not seen before. Okay, interesting. Here you notice that the Muslims, they are very open about what they do in the bedroom. They ask everybody about what's happening to his wife. What is missing that the guy will describe now what, what, what she do exactly. So she is sexually aroused as never seen before in her sleep. And when I wake her, she got, she was angry with me. I need your help since my marriage is heading to divorce. She think I'm crazy when I discuss this with her. Answer. Now the answer is coming. They're very serious. She is right in the sense that sexual dreams like nightmare are dream, illusion, hulm. From shaitan only, in the sense of inspiration. Not in the sense that shaitan affects something in someone. Hmm? And now he is using Arabic word. You should never describe to her, uh, to describe it to her. Uh, in the wording of title heading, as it would distress her. All right. Uh, it is the best to pray two raka'at, which, you know, you bow down like twice, you know, uh, and uh, uh, read the Quran uh, before before you sleep. Recite the word Ya Wadud 100 times. Wadud, Ya 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 Wadud. That will solve the problem. Okay. Uh, you know, like do this, like he's giving him recipe. Okay. Now, As for an related question in the title header, the unconstituted Sheikh uh, Islam, uh, true Imam, and Jalal Din al Suyuti, etc., he said that uh, in his book on jinn, Ahkamul Jinn, what he said the truth is that it is possible for a human being and jinn to have intercourse. And a Talabi mentioned in his tafsir that that, that is meaning uh, of uh, O Iblis, a partner in their human being with and children. This is Quran, chapter 1764. Al Hakim al he said, and Al Tabari, etc., Ibn Jarir, etc., narrated that Mujahid, when, he, when a man has intercourse with his wife and he does not name Allah. The jinn coils around his uh, uh, yotra, sorry if I'm saying the word wrong, and has intercourse along with his wife. So now the Muslim, they believe that there is a, there is an, uh, a threesome party happening. Threesome party. You, your wife, and shaitan. Why? Because you did not say the name of Allah. Actually, there's a prayer you have to say before you start boom boom. You have to say Allahumma jannibna shaitana wa jannib shaitana ma razaqtana blah 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 blah. So you have to say those words in Arabic. In Arabic too, not in English. Otherwise, shaitan will go around your penis like a condom and he will be doing boom boom to your wife. So now we have like a lot of fun. And actually, this is why they explain. They say, this is why the wife, she is happy this time, satisfied. Not because of you, because shaitan doing his job, you know? The genie. Hmm? This is why they, they claim that Muslim men, they don't satisfy their women because, uh, uh, because shaitan is not around their private part like the Christians. So Muslims are weaker. Because shaitan, if you don't say uh, the, the prayer, shaitan, he would do that, you know? So, uh, according to Muslims, shaitan, he do that to uh, Christian women, atheist women, uh, etc. Because they don't say the name of Allah before they start the boom, boom, you know, stuff, etc. So, uh, uh, shaitan will be like doing the job. 
and this is why the most Christian women or atheist women or Hindu or Buddha they enjoy more sex because their husband is not the one doing it really it is shaitan brother true story but Muslim men they say the name of Allah and they pray to Allah before they do intercourse so your wife like she take off her panty I'm not going to give you details before you start like you know you say the prayer and then shaitan he cannot go around your private part which mean if you don't say the prayer shaitan will be the kingdom to you if you say the prayer Allah will be the kingdom to you he protects shaitan you know he Allah himself he will run himself maybe around your private part and he will keep shaitan away it's like a spray you know you spray Allah over your private part and then it says here so if you don't uh, if you don't say that the jinn coil around the the private part of the man the, the, the head of it and do intercourse along with him and this is the meaning of Allah saying uh, whom neither man nor jinn has touched before them see we go back to the verse in the Quran which we mentioned to you here because I was asking what does this mean he is saying to us no man no genie touch them you see okay but look how stupid this interpretation is those are women in heaven what genie there's no genie there and there's no men there enter in those women yet because those women are just you know i mean there's nobody in heaven at the, right now who's going to go there and play who is the one who will play with them but here you notice how the women fictions about sex goes far away you know beyond stupidity to believe that there is a genie do sleep with your wife if you don't say the words and the prayers which Muhammad he mentioned but look what happened here I don't know how many of you notice how stupid this story is I remember uh, once there was a Muslim he used to come to a uh, Christian uh, chat and this guy each time he come to the microphone he say you Christians you are the children of shaitan, you know, etc. So the those Christians they, they don't know what to say to him. This guy, he always he come to take the mic, he say the thing, same thing. So once I was in that room, a short room listening, I wasn't talking actually, I was just listening, you know, so like uh, I was working in my computer and at the same time I have the chart on the chat on, but my name is uh, you know, they can see my nickname in the chat room. So the admin of the chat room sent me a, a text message, a private message. Say, can you please get this guy busted? He is annoying. He keep coming saying the same thing. We do not know what to say to him. I said, okay, give me the microphone. So I took the microphone. I asked this Abdul. Abdul, are you sure this hadith is sah, sahih? He said, <laughs> it's sahih. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the hadith saying that as we see you know like if you don't say the prayer before uh, you do boom boom with your wife shaitan will go around your penis and he will be doing your wife okay so i said to him three times are you sure this is sahih brother he said absolutely i said take the microphone again and confirm please he said are you stupid or what i did not need to confirm again that's it i told you it's uh, sahih i said okay take the mic again and confirm for the third time because muhammad he confirmed things three times there's no way for a mistake so he confirmed it and he was making fun of me i said okay based on what you said to us that the one who don't say the prayer before he do have intercourse with his wife that means that your prophet himself is a son of shaitan because his father was not a believer and he did not say that prayer and as long shaitan will share the wife with the man of the man who don't say that prayer that mean muhammad himself he is the son of shaitan for his father did not mention that the prayer and you should see what happened to this guy he took the microphone may Allah destroy you may Allah kill you you have the intelligence of the devil you are the devil you know what a puppy you keep coming insulting the Christians saying to them they are children of shaitan because they don't say the prayer and now you know you are stupid you Muhammad himself must be stupid because he himself is a son of a, a non-believer that's mean Muhammad himself is a son of shaitan and shaitan was doing his mommy with his daddy I mean you're a prophet Muhammad his brain is located where specifically in his bum didn't he think about himself 
Okay, I'm going to tell them this. If you don't say this prayer, shaitan go around your penis and he will be doing your mother or your wife. Okay, fine. But you, you Muhammad yourself, your mother is in hell, your father is in hell. They did not say that prayer. That means Muhammad himself is son of shaitan. Right? So, how we can accept such a prophet to be a prophet? I mean, this guy, he have a lack of intellect. He's a stupid. He can't be a prophet of God. And he's weird. He just insulted his mother, insulted his mother, his, his father. And for sure, it doesn't say that, CP, absolutely. Uh, Ibn Abbas said, The Ibsens, uh, okay, uh, the uh, what? Mahthum? Ah, okay, the Muhannathun. Ibn Abbas said that the gays are the sons of genie. Ah, now we know why there is gays. You don't say the prayer, Shaitan, he do your, you know, your, your mother, you turn to be a gay. Oh boy. See? And I was wondering why there is some people they are gay, some women they are lesbian. What is that about? Where is it coming from? You know, but we are not smart. Like, I mean, the, the Muhammadan is the one who can find all reasoning. Hmm? I mean, do you see the stupidity and the madness of this God? So, to make it simple, Islam is a collection of promises about your private part and your private part and your private part and the, everything ends with your private part. In the earth, it's about your private part. In the heaven, it's about your private part. With Allah, with the private part, everything is about the private part. <clears throat> uh, Muhammad, actually, he claimed <clears throat> that in the heaven, you will have a tent, and this tent is made from uh, lu'lu, like pearls. Now, let me see if I can find the hate in English. Hold on, give me a second. All right. Abu Bakr, Abu Abdullah, uh, blah, 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 la, la, uh, said, okay. It doesn't say that, CB. Uh, reported in the authority of his father, authority of his father, like that. They have authority, man. That Allah Messenger said, in the paradise, there would be for a believer a tent of a single. Hollywood, like it is, it's empty inside, like a tent, it's empty inside, made from pearl, and breath of which would be 60 miles. I didn't know, like at that time, there was miles uh, in the time of Muhammad, what miles? Here, the mile is different from what they are talking about. Uh, it would be meant for a believer that a believer would go around it and none would be able to see the other. Okay, what does that mean? Your wives are scattered inside this tent. You go from woman to woman, and everyone she is waiting for you in her bed. And nobody will see because you are too far, too far. This is just inside the tent, 60 miles, according to that what mile present at that time. Isn't it, this beautiful? <clears throat> and this tent is in the in the sky. In the sky, you know. In Arabic, it says it doesn't say actually paradise. It says fis sama. Sama is a sky, flying tent.
And here, you know, we ask ourselves, okay, how I'm going to go to heaven? The Quran said, you are going to get what you deserve as work. You know, what, what do you do? We give you as what you deserve based on what you did. If we go to some verses in the Quran, we will find many of them like this, which is funny and stupid because they contradict the teaching of Muhammad. If you go in the Quran, as an example, chapter 52, verse 16, chapter 66, 7, both of them it says uh, that you are going to get what you deserve based in your deeds, your, your, your act, your work. All right? So be patient, okay, and all etc. And you are going to be uh, being requited for what you used to do. So it's very clear. I mean, there's no need to uh, explain it too much. The verse is so clear. Based on what you do in your life, in this earth, Allah will reward you. But look, Muhammad, as usual, not only he says stupid things which nobody can understand. And not only he is he fantasize about what he claim, but yet he contradict himself and he say things which does not make sense. As an example, we just saw the Quran saying that Allah He promised the Muslim to give them what they uh, re reward based on what they did in this earth, the, the deeds. And there's many verses in the Quran saying that Muhammad said, and this is Sahih Muslim. This is Sahih Hadith, so nobody can say it's weak. You know, as usual, it doesn't say that CP. Hadith number 2816D. There's none among you whose deed alone would attain salvation. Here you see the corruption of Muslim translation. There's nowhere in the hadith it says alone. So for you as an English uh, speaking person who do not know Arabic, you will think that this is true because that it's a, make it make it more okay. But in Arabic it doesn't say anywhere alone. This is the Arabic in the front of me. It says, "Laysa ahadun minkum yunjihi amalahu." Not even a single one of you is going to be saved by his deeds. There is no alone. Actually, we can do this. Let me open this uh, page in uh, in uh, Google browser, so we can use Google translation to get them busted to show you. This is not doesn't say that in Arabic. Nowhere it says that in Arabic. This is why we cannot trust Muslim translation, never. I will translate the both of them, you know, I will make translation, Google translation, and in front of your eyes, just to show you how the Muslims, they try to cover up the stupidity of their prophet by fabricating the translation. Click translate. <clears throat> okay, options. It says English, English. No, we want English. We want Arabic, English. All right. So now we will have in the right side, the Google translation in the left side, the uh, original translation by Muslims. Okay. Anyone see here the word alone? Actually, the translation is coming funny. Well, it says here, none of you will be uh, his deed will save him. None. Not even one. And they said to him, even you? Not even you? He said, not even I. Unless God, he warp me with his forgiveness or mercy. That's it. There is nowhere his deed alone. Your deed will never attain salvation for you. So what will attain salvation? Mercy from Allah. Which means everything Muhammad he promised in the Quran is a hocus, it's a lie. Because if I cannot get salvation based on my deeds, then all the promises in the Quran are false promises. And the Quran is full of verses, by the way, speaking about that. This is not only one place. We can find tons of verses. As an example, not limited. Chapter 2, verse number 25. And give a glad tiding 
to those who believe and do righteous and good deeds. See? Garden, river, fruits. Okay. So the, the Quran is so clear. Those who do good deeds are righteous. And righteous in Islam, by the way, is not the same as righteousness in Christianity or Judaism. Righteous in Islam is to do jihad, like in Nigeria, they kidnap 300 girls. They are, you know, this is the righteous of Islam. Like just yesterday, they, they, killed, they killed 30, the day before, 80. So th this is the act of righteousness, doing jihad in Syria, joining Shishenia, Mujahideen, uh, uh, the, the Yogur Mujahideen to kill the Chinese. This is the righteousness. This is the best of the righteous, actually. And Muhammad, he confirmed that the best of righteousness or deeds of, Muhammad, of a Muslim he do is jihad. Uh, <clears throat> and because we know that Muslim will say that, it doesn't say that, CP. So we better show some reference before they start making fabrication. By the way, I found, for some reason, each time I search for Islamic books, I found that the CIA, believe it, CIA, they have looked like they have all Islamic books for free in the internet. Unbelievable. You know, each time I search for something, the first thing coming to the top is a CIA. Look, I just searched for the, 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 the book name. It says what? CIA.government. Isn't it amazing? They are working hard to study the cult of Islam. Uh, <clears throat> Let us see. If we go in the Quran, you will see a clear proof saying that the best action of a human being is is to do jihad. Now the Muslim they will say to you, jihad is to do fasting, to be nice. Jihad is to struggle, brother. No, no, no. Jihad is to go for war and kill. Ah, this website is not working now. All right, let us try something else. <clears throat> March 4th, March what March 4th? March for war. Whether you are light, being healthy, young and wealthy, or heavy, being ill, okay? Strive hard with your wealth. Strive hard, where is, it? Where is the word jihad? This is jihad, strive hard. How you can strive hard with your wealth? What exactly mean? And yourself. And your life for the cause of Allah. You can go to the interpretation and you will see that there is two options for you to do jihad. If you are an old person or ill, but you have money, you support the army, buy them swords, knives. If you are young, healthy, you go for war. And this is the best for you. If you know, that is the best. In case you know. And there is other form of jihad, actually. Muhammad, he said that, you know, you, 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 you do jihad by your money, by your sword, like by yourself, you die, you die for a sake. But if you are a, a, a potato coward, you... Yeah, do jihad by your mouth, like those Muslims who make videos to re respond to me. They are fake Muslims. Those are the, according to Muhammad, they are the weakest of Muslims. All right. Do jihad. No, this one is daif, they will not like it. 
But anyway, we can get them the strong one. Forget about that one. This one is Sahih. <laughs> Muhammad he made it clear that the Muslims, not only they have to do jihad, but Muslims are white supremacist belief. And those are the Arab. He was speaking to the Arab. You are the best of people ever raised up for the benefit between two bracket mankind chapter 3 verse 110 the best for mankind this is the quran are those which mean here the, after the after the number is explaining what is what, what what make them the best what is making those muslims the best what exactly because the quran says that the Muslims are the best of mankind. It doesn't say for the benefit of mankind. That's a fabrication in translation. But when you hear this word benefit, you think uh, there's a, maybe it's about science. Maybe they will help us to fight uh, uh, coronavirus or something. No. The best for mankind, who are they? Are those who bring them with chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. And supposedly the Muslims are being good for you. They will put a chain around you like a dog and drag you like a filthy dog. And then that is to enforce you to convert to Islam. So you might be saved from going to hellfire. And then if they save you from the hellfire, Allah will make your penis endless. And will have all those women waiting for you. And he will make a big tent, 760, 70 miles open for you. Or 1,200 miles for you. And, uh, you know, and women, they have nobody touched their private part before you. All of this just because, you know, I mean, what, what's wrong with you? So here you see Muhammad. He have two methods in order to make people convert to Islam. One is entertaining their sexual and their money temptation. How I can tempt them. And then I can tempt some to fight for me and die for me. And then the rest who did not get agree with me with temptation, I will bring my men and they will put the chain around their necks and they will force them to convert to Islam. So do you see the method? The method is very simple. A group of people, I will be able to tempt them. This is shaitan, Satan method. A group, I can tempt them, make them believe in me, promise them vagina, penis, potato, tomato, fruits, naked boys go around me. They are very white as the Quran described. They will never, they will never bleed. Women who they have nobody touch their private part. Women with big boobs, as the Quran says. And you know, big boobs is very important, you know. I mean, who, who want to have women in the heaven with the small boobs? I mean, come on. We, well, if they don't have balloon, what's the benefit of those women? We need balloon. So Muhammad, he do everything he can to tempt you, either by money, or by big breast, or by a vagina, or by a penis, or by gold or silver. And yet, if he could not, all those things did not work. And somebody is saying to me, you are a liar. His name is Walid. Walid, it's in front of you. I mean, isn't it funny the Muslim, they say to me, you are a liar, and I'm showing the showing the reference. I mean, the reference in front of me. What do you mean I'm wrong? It's in front of you, my friend. Chapter 78, verse number 33, Allah promising you big breast women. What do you mean I'm wrong? <laughs> What kind of God he promised me big boobs? It's in the front of you. Where? What are you talking about? I'm making up things. The understanding wrong. What do you mean understanding wrong? Right? Understanding wrong. The understanding wrong. I mean, okay, that's uh, even this one. Okay, explain it to us. Those are virtual boobs. Hmm? They are fake boobs. Do you think that those boobs are not real, brother? Hmm? 
no routing like this in the Quran. So what is this in front of me now? This is what? This is Mickey Mouse book. This is the Quran. You know, this is your website. <laughs> There's nothing like this in the Quran. And that's it. He decides nothing like it. no CP. It doesn't say that CP, and that the problem is solved. Hmm? Yeah. In two seconds, he called me liar. Prove us wrong. Okay, give us the verse. Give us what the verse saying in the Quran, chapter seventy-eight, verse number thirty-three. I am waiting for you to pause for us. What you get is faking, yes, maybe. Is faking, yes, maybe. Okay, faking, yes, maybe. My friend, I'm showing you the verse number, the chapter number, and you are telling me faking, yes, maybe. What maybe? Call me baby. Here we go. Chapter 78, verse number 33. You know what? I'm going to make you happy. I'm going to change the translator. Forget about this translator. Maybe this guy is an idiot. I will give you the front translation. Just wait. Which translation you like? Which translation you you want? Yusuf Ali, Yusuf Ali, very famous Yusuf Ali, big dog, hmm. ah, big boobs. Here we go. You see it? Do you see it? Actually, I'm very upset that Allah He promised us only women with big boobs. I thought He would you know promise us women with seven boobs, only two boobs. So imagine if the Quran was written by images, not by words. Hmm? Let us say we are people who do not know how to write, how to read. So Allah, he needed to write for us by images. So the verse here, we can replace it by this. This is the promise of Allah. This is what Allah is promising me. As simple as that. So now we can take the verse away and we can draw boobs. And that is Quran. And supposedly now, I cannot wait to convert to Islam. I mean, who can wait? Nobody can wait. Look at those. Okay, hold on. I forgot something. This is not actually, the drawing is not accurate. This is not Islamic, really. You know, uh, Muslims are very conservative people. So we will draw accordingly to the Sharia, brother. Hold on. What kind of boobs those boobs? So what happened to my pen? My pen is not functioning correctly. Okay. So those are the boobs, brother. And now we have to put hijab, brother. We are very conservative people. This is hijab. This is Mimi hijab. It took like a phone now. Hmm? So... The religion who cover women and women we need to cover them brother and women they cannot show their hair and now we are talking about their boobs and this God is a promising me boobs may Allah boob you yeah that make it more conservative I mean so the Muslim will not be offended you know they got offended from anything I mean, this is God. This is God. If this is God, what is this stupid? And if you ask Zakir Naik about this, Zakir Naik, he will explain it. There will be for sure better way than a Christian prince. Brother, I quit them. They did the day I with him. Then, what is the side of the booth for women in heaven? And I promise you, Tatar. Don't worry about that. You will not need to do silicone and any kind of surgery. Allah will give you very big boobs and they will be very beautiful to the point if you dump from the thick floor they will make like sound like a boing 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 
That is so good to be true. That's so beautiful. I feel I want to cry. I just saw the light of Allah. I saw the light of Allah through the nipples of those women there. This is God. And look, next to the boobs, there is a cup which is full. Uh, makes sense. I mean, full cup. Like, hello. I mean, there is no way we will enjoy big boobs without full cup. Full cup of what? What, what does that mean? Hello? To brim? I mean, that, that's perfect description, brother. You have the boobs. And now, okay, let us make it more clear now. So now we have the boobs. And now next to the boobs, brother, Allah will give us full cup. Hey, here we go. We have a cup. All right. Hey, perfect. What do you want? This is heaven. That's it. What do you want more? What, what, what an Arab guy like me, he want in life more than this. I'll be, I'll be, be honest, Bri, please be honest. Hmm? What what any any Arab guy like me, he wished to have in heaven more than this. Now we have the big boobs and now the full full cup, not half cup. Hello. I mean you go to the restaurant, they give you like little tiny food in a small dish, not, not full uh, dish. And same in the cup. In Islam, Allah, no, full cup. That's it, full to the top. Drink it, all of it. Big nibbles, two uh, breasted. Women, big breast, you know, and uh, that's it. Allah, 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 Allah Akbar. I mean, do you see the connection between the first sentence and the sentence? What the full cup have to do with big, big boobs? I mean, what is the connection between the big boobs and the full cup? If there is any super intelligent Abdul can explain to us the connection because I'm not getting it brother I'm not really getting it I mean there's boobs and then there's full cup after that what is this As you see, the language of the Quran, the ideas of the Quran, the, the images of the Quran are not suitable for the use of a humankind. This is something you can seduce with a monkey. Uh, you know, I mean, we are a human. You know, we, what about you tell me about a woman? I love her. She loved me. What big boobs? So that's, it, that's it. Big boobs? It doesn't matter who's the women it's just the big boobs so you are you don't care for who is the women or what you care that you will get women with big boobs you don't care if you like her she love you you love her no or what we care we will get women with big boobs and full cup what is this And the funny, they say to you, nobody can make Quran like Allah. Can you tell the meaning of Bismillah? Bismillah means in the name of Allah. But it's a wrong word. In Arabic, there's nothing. It's called Bism. It's Bism. So as you see, promises of being richer than 10 kings market have images of men and women women having sex with genie tent full of women being richer than 50 kings all of this making it so clear for us that islam is materialistic religion focusing in the belly and 
few inches down. Food and sex. And the money is to serve those two objects or two subjects. Money is to make your belly happy and your penis in vacation. You know, I try always my best to make things easy to understand. But sometimes people don't notice how stupid what we are talking about. So we have to make this a drawing and we have to make it. I'm not trying to make it funny. It is funny and stupid. I'm not trying to make it comedy. It is comedy. You see, where is God promising me to be happy? Be happy. You see, do I need big boobs to be happy? Is that, is that how we can fight depression? So we go to the clinic, you see a shrink. You see the doctor. Doctor, I'm very sad. Ah, you are very sad. Open your mouth. Okay. Say, ah, ah. Say, ooh, ooh. Okay. Uh, we uh, are going to write for you prescription. 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 And that include big boobs. I mean, what does this have to do with this? So now I'm fighting depression in earth. And sadness and now I will be happy and how he make me happy by big boobs who is the stupid here or he promised me to be 50 times more rich than any king what they would do with the richness in the heaven I mean imagine Muhammad described that the heaven uh, your house will be one brick of gold one brick of silver one brick of gold one brick of silver one brick of gold one brick of silver. who who care for this gold and silver i'm actually a house made from gold and silver is ugly that will be very cold metal disgusting house imagine you live inside a tank made of gold that is not good imagine if your house made of gold this is the most ugly house ever secondly what is the value of gold in heaven Why the metal there is going to rust? The iron? What a different. <laughs> I mean, it's so stupid. and I, I feel sorry for those people who believe in such a garbage. And look how Muhammad, he uh, contradict himself. One story, he says, one brick of gold, one brick of silver. And then one story, he says that your house will be made from pearl. Okay, is it from pearl or from gold and silver? As you see, Islam cannot survive questions and cannot survive a little intellect and thinking. Islam only can survive in a place where nobody dare to ask questions, where everybody have to agree. The second you open the opportunity for questioning, Islam will die. This is why in Islamic countries, all of them they have the blasphemy law, which if you say something against Muhammad, they will kill you. This is the only way to keep Muslims Muslims. This is the only way. Okay, somebody, a Muslim, saying to me, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika. Okay, look what we talk about. They have no answer. There is no God but Allah. This is the answer. We, we should tell him why Allah promising us big boobs? They have no answer. Why Allah saying that shaitan sleep with your wife? They have no answer. Why Muhammad he promised you 70 years orgasm? No answer. The answer is no, there is no God but Allah. Eh, that's it. Too much hashish. They avoid everything we said, which is very embarrassing, by saying there is no God but Allah. That's it. Supposedly now he shut us up like that's it. There is no God but Allah. Actually, the shahada itself is suffering from stupid intellect because how you say there's no God and then you say Allah 
Secondly, if you go in the Quran, isn't it your God who says that Allah is the best of the creators? How Allah is the best of the creators if he is the only creator? Tabarak Allahu Ahsan al khaliqi This is the most stupid statement. And look, the Muslim in translation, they try to cover it up. They say, he is the best to create. It doesn't say that. It says he is the best of the creators. Change the translation, translator, you will see the translation change. Miraculously. Why? Because they are liars. Here we go. He is the best of the creators. So Allah, he admitted in the Quran, Akka Muhammad, that Allah is one of many creators. So how there is no God but Allah? When Allah, he says, he is the best between all gods. The creators are God. The creators are gods. He is the best. He claimed to be the best, but there's no proof. There's no proof even he, if he can, he can create a mosquito. So even when you say the Shahada, which is saying that there's no God but Allah, is a joke. Right? How how you how you explain to me the best of the creators? If you go in the story, you will see that Muhammad he have uh, a, a script man who write for him the Quran, and Muhammad he did read, enter here. Muhammad was making this, and then he stopped. The writer for Muhammad and scribe he says. So blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. The guy he was like wondering, like this is amazing. Like Muhammad he said, according to the Muslim interpretation, not me. And then Muhammad he said to him, write it there. The guy he said, write what? He said, write as you said. So blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. The guy he said to himself, well, I am the one who said that. And if Muhammad claimed to be a prophet, he inspired by God receiving that. Well, I am a prophet then too, because I am the one who said that first. And he decided to leave Islam. His name is Abdullah ibn Sarah. Anyone can read his story. And the funny, uh, Muslims, they report this story themselves in their books. Speaking about this man, Muhammad is stealing the verse from him, adding it to the Quran. As you see, Islam does not make sense in any way, in any mean. I'm not going to keep you long. Today is Sunday. Some of you maybe still uh, enter Monday already. But people maybe in the States soon they will go to sleep. It's getting late. I want to say to you, uh, use the gift which God He provide you, which is your brain. And don't be a fool. And always I want to say one sentence. If a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? Hmm? If such a fool, look at this garbage. If such a fool can fool you, how fool are you? You must be very extremely fool. There is no way God he promised women with big boobs. There is no way God will tell us what is inside the vagina of the women that nobody touch her there just to make me accept him. There is no way God, he promised me, you know, Nike and Gucci. That's stupid. Have you ever heard of a God, he promised you pillow? Pillow? Like a pillow? I mean, for the sake of pillow? Have you ever heard of a God, he promised you a chair? Couches? Right? So as you see. This is cannot be. Cannot be from God. 
the promise of a person is telling you about his identity, what is inside his head. Maybe you do not know me, maybe I do not know you, but my promises to you is me, is how I think. And if this is how Allah he promised, this is how Allah he think. If the promise of this God is about private part, money and gold and silver, Allah is just about this, the same as any satanic teaching. All satanic teaching meet in one place. You see, if you notice that all cult leader in through history, you can go and do search about them. You will find that all of them they share one thing: they want to sleep with your wife, they want your money, and they want to, you know, be praised. Muhammad he called himself Muhammad, which means the praised one. So who is God? If Muhammad is the praised one, who is Allah? The name itself is a blasphemy against God. Because should be Allah, should be Muhammad. This should be a name of Allah if he is God, not Muhammad. How you call how you call a prophet a praise the praised the praised one? Who praised him? Allah Himself He praised him. The Quran says so. <laughs> so Muhammad he is a very aggressive cult founder who subjugated God as a sexual tool for him to control people around him. Sometimes he make verses even about women they offer themselves to the Prophet. So he did not stop with the promises of sex. He want himself to enjoy that privilege. And he made it clear that this is a privilege for him alone. Privilege of money, privilege of women, privilege of everything. privilege to Muhammad, the best of the booty. Any Muslim woman, she offer herself to the Prophet. And look, the Muslim, they say, a Prophet, he wished to marry her. Where it says the word marry her? It says, yes, thank you, which means to F her. It's a privilege only for you. It's very clear that cult leader, they want privilege, and their privilege is about money and sex. What does this have to do with God? The guy he have already 13 wives. Why he need more women to offer themselves to him? It's obviously clear. Privilege to you? Why? What does this have to do with God? How this can be in relation with the, between a prophet and God? God saying to his prophet, a privilege to you. What? Women offer themselves to you. Why? Muhammad, he did not uh, have the joy of having a woman in his bed yet, so Allah trying to help him. And the guy is ready to have a long run uh, line of women sleeping with him. Ask yourself, if you are a Muslim, you are listening, what does this have to do with God? How does this serve Allah? How that make Allah happy? That women offer themselves to the Prophet. What does this have to do with God? Nothing. Imagine I claim to be a prophet of God and then I ask women to sleep with me. Isn't it obvious that this is a scam, this is a fraud? And I claim that this is only given to me as a privilege? Isn't it obvious? Be smart, be intelligent, don't be a fool. Anyway, I hope that's uh, the time we spend together today. We learn something and we are able to share some ideas. Don't forget please to download the videos after we finish. It takes some time, 20 minutes before the video will be ready to download and share in YouTube. So don't forget to download the video, share it with your friends. Our knowledge is for free and we encourage people to share our videos, learn from them. And um, if you are a person who speak other languages, feel free to add subtitled. Just be honest in the translation. Don't fabricate things we did not say. And uh, I hope the world will see the truth and the truth will set them free. Obviously, Islam cannot be from God. God is not a pimp. God is holy. God, he can make you happy 
without all those things and why not why not happiness my friend is a feeling it is not something materialistic and the God who gave me every joy I have in my body including the pain because God he gave us pain and joy the God who was able to make a mother cry from happiness to see her child growing being successful this is not materialistic nobody can explain it it's a feeling can't Allah make you feel happiness without gold and silver cannot Allah make you happy without sex and in this private part if Allah is God for sure he can and the Holy God his promises always must be holy because this is his nature promises of someone always present his nature the Holy God this is why Jesus said he and she they will not get married they will be the same as angels that is the holiness of God me and you male and female as a Christians when we go to heaven we will not be having sex that is perfectly match with the holiness of God we will be the same as angel which means Jesus he promised you to be free you see many people they read uh, the, the Bible but they don't think about it what what the what, what the mean that you will be the same as angels You will be free no need to drink no need to eat no need for medicine no need for sex sex is need sex is need men and women they need each other that's a need God will free you from your needs in this earth you are a slave of your needs in the heaven you are free and your freedom cannot be explained for it is so beautiful no money you are free from money why you want money free imagine you have a car and this car do not need a fuel that's it. I will never stop in a gas station. I'm free. But if my car needs fuel, well, my motion is limited to my fuel. And my fuel is limited to my money. So always use your brain and try to be someone he have an interest to use his brain otherwise you decide not to live like a human the messiah he free me muhammad he enslave you and muhammad when he said the best of muslims is the one who bring them and the chains around their necks he was explaining to us clearly what islam is about it's about enslavery violent and disgusting abuse of each other as a human you are the best of mankind and the funny the Muslim they say that Jews are uh, they think they are superior they say that they are chosen people of God the Quran say the same but the Quran make it ugly the Bible make it clear that the Jews are the chosen people because they choose God and that does not make them superior God himself, he punished them many times. The Messiah, he rebuked them many times. And God, he said to those who claim they worship him, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. Muhammad, no. You are the best of mankind. And what is the best of mankind? Who are they? Those who bring a human being from Africa, from everywhere bring them and put a chain around their neck till they embrace Islam 
This is the whole idea behind Al Qaeda and ISIS and all the criminals in Nigeria who they attack women, kidnap them in Africa and everywhere in Syria, in Egypt, in Libya. We have a duty, brother, to go and bring them with the chains around their necks. Because Islam teaches Muslims that they are superior and the rest are animals. It's a satanic fascist cult and the proof is a uh, clear in front of you they are the best of mankind and because they are the best they have the authority to put a chain around your neck as if you are a dog read carefully think carefully and make your decision carefully for time will come and you will not be able to make decisions no more because your life will be taken from you. Accept the Messiah Muslims before it's too late. The devil will not help you. He cannot intercede for you. And there's no way God is as Muhammad described to be. That is an insult to God. God is holy. God is good. God is beautiful. And all those ugly things cannot be from God. For God, he loved the world. He loved who? The world, including the Muslims, including the Hindus, including the Buddhas, including the atheists. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. Not because God he hate, but because God he loved. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you tomorrow again, if I can. And don't forget to download the video, share it, because we will clean our videos soon from my page, as usual. I don't keep my videos, and feel free to download them as soon as they are ready. Thank you very much, and God bless you.